I won't forget that morning, not if I live to be a hundred. I counted the men as they marched out of the yard. They'd hardly slept for weeks. We of the CID had slept even less, but the nightmare that kept us awake was all the same nightmare. That's why we weren't surprised when the commissioner asked us up to the conference room for a bit of a talk. He'd talked to us plenty, we knew that. It didn't help any to know what was ahead of us. Must we have that window open, Gregson? Oh, shut it if you want to. Chief will be in enough of a temper without having a ruddy blast down the back of his neck. Gentlemen, the commissioner. Stuffy in here. Be seated, won't you? Gentlemen, if you wish to know what able men you are, read any of the works of popular fiction that glamorize your achievements, but don't, I beg of you, read the daily papers. They might give you an inferiority complex. I hate to mention it, but we're confronted with a series of the most atrocious murders since Jack the Ripper. And in the meantime, the CID might as well be playing at shove hate me for all the good we've accomplished. Now look. Here, here, and here. Each of these red flags scattered through the city stands for a woman brutally murdered, a woman's terror, a woman's death agony. These are no ordinary crimes. These are the works of a fiend who kills first and mutilates afterwards. A ghoul who hacks off a part of his victim body and carries it away with him. A loathsome souvenir of his butchery. Three women murdered so far, and you haven't turned in one clue. You haven't given me one lead. Here you sit and wait for news of a fourth victim with your arms folded. Well, we hadn't long to wait. It was down Lambeth Way where a young woman was hurrying home late last night. She saw something and stopped. It was a constable. He spoke to her and he walked along with her, just in case. He saw her go down the stairway to the basement lodging where she lived. We can only surmise what happened after that. pride in my pocket and went to see the man had so often helped out Inspector Lestrade and myself in the past, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. If ever a man needed help, I did. This makes four, Inspector. Four defenseless women here in the heart of London. And everyone with the right forefinger hacked off. Not hacked, Inspector Gregson. Cleanly, expertly severed. The work of a skilled surgeon. That's our only clue. Much about the age of my sister's girl. Is there no way of stopping this, Mr. Holmes? Yes. There's a way, somehow. The fiend that did this. I promise. I promise. We have nothing to go on. That's the rotten part of it. We can't get far without knowing the motive. Well, at least we know what the motives were not. It wasn't robbery, nor passion, thanks be, nor yet vengeance. Because they all came of totally unrelated families. Steady, Inspector, steady. I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes. I don't turn a hair when it's a bloke that can look after himself. A little slip of a thing like that. Yes, it's horrible. Come on, let's get a drink.
Good evening, Mr. Holmes. Good evening, Vincent. Whiskey and soda, please, and a double for my friend here, Inspector Gregson. Thank you, sir. Make mine Irish. Decent of you to give me a hand with this thing, Mr. Holmes. Always a pleasure to be of help to Scotland Yard, Inspector. A little out of my line, looking for a maniac who murders just for the fun of it. Or perhaps just to get a human finger. In all four cases, murderer risk capture by stopping to secure a finger. Well, what for? Who knows? He's just a madman. Perhaps there's method in his madness. If we could just trace those missing fingers. If? If we could just drain the English Channel, we might find a penny. Huh? Huh. Oh, thank you. You may keep those, Mr. Holmes. Thank you. Hmm. Sir George Fenwick, isn't it? Yes. That is daughter with him. Don't be so naive, Inspector. You know everyone, don't you, darling? Well, hardly. A week ago, I didn't know you. A week. How fast it's gone. I collect these things. How very quaint of you. Shall we go? Yes. What are you looking at, Mr. Holmes? Again, a very handsome woman. Not to want for purple, but uh, giving an excellent imitation. Would you like to come to my flat for a nightcap? Lovely idea. Yes, isn't it? I wonder where she's taking Sir George Fenwick. Don't be so naive, Mr. Holmes. Good evening, Mum. Hello, Grandon. Any messages? No, Mum. Thank you. Uh, drinks, Grandon. One of your nice surprises. Yes, Mum. I say, you don't mean that... Uh... Grandon's a marvel, aren't you, Grandon? Yes, Mum. You wouldn't believe the things she can do. Hmm. Ah, charming place. Delightful. Really? Do you think so? I'm so glad. Do sit down. Do you mind? Do I mind? What a question. I don't mind anything, really. Except not being with you. Now, you really don't want me to believe that, do you? Not too seriously. Good. We're both quite grown up, aren't we? Quite. You're a treasure, Crandon. And lower the lights a little as you leave. I prefer a more flattering light. <laughs> In any light you'd be... Would I? And don't you know it? <laughs> Perhaps I do. Oh, that priceless woman. You wouldn't believe it, but she's absurdly romantic. She loves dreamy music, and she thinks that we... But uh, we do, don't we? Do we? Well, it's rather soothing, restful. Yes. And we all need rest at times. 
like tired children who played too long. You've played with wooden soldiers, I suppose. Hmm. Funny. Hadn't thought of that for years. Toy boats were my special joy. Anything I could set afloat anywhere. Like this. And this. Toy boat sailing into the Never Never Land. The land of beautiful dreams. Look. Look, odd, isn't it, how the light is reflected? Little specks of light that move and move, like stars on a slowly moving stream. You know, Holmes, I'm very sensitive to atmosphere. No. Yes, I can tell by the feel of this room there's been a murder committed here. It may interest you to know, my dear fellow, it was the other side of that door at the foot of the stairs that the poor girl was murdered. If only I could find it. Find what? The one thing these unfortunate victims have in common that might give us a motive for these murders. There must be something. Another Jack the Ripper, if you ask me, a homicidal maniac. No, Watson, in the case of Jack the Ripper, there was one thing in common. His victims were all from one walk of life, living in the same section of the city. In this case, the murderer chooses his victims from all walks of life and from different sections of the city. No, my dear fellow, this is not the work of a homicidal maniac. It's something infinitely more sinister. You mean the creeps? What on earth are you talking about? Watson, I'm convinced that these murders are only incidental to some larger and more diabolical scheme. That may be, but why the severed fingers? The answer to that question, my dear fellow, is our only hope of solving these mysteries. Dear sister, I am so happy. I had such a lovely holiday at Brighton with you and Alf. And I'm looking forward to being with you again. Poor little thing. Sort of raises a lump in your throat. I can picture her sitting here happily writing this letter. And I'm not bit of realizing that she's shortly going to her death. Hello? Gregson? Oh, there you are, Mr. Holmes. I've been looking for you everywhere. What's happened? Murder in Edgeway Road, not half an hour ago. Woman? Yes. On the right forefinger, cut off clean. Come along, Holmes. Come along, come along. How many more tarasms, I tell you? You're missing a treat. This is delicious. Little jam tarts to follow. Aren't you tempted? Mm. You and your flesh pots. They tell me that the fish is good for the brain. Brains haven't any. You realize that a day, a whole day, and a night have gone by since that bestial affair in Edgware Road? I'm as much in the dark as ever. Hello, here comes a client, unless I'm very much mistaken. Attractive, very attractive. Obviously, she left home under the stress of some very great emotion. Well, how do you know that? She isn't wearing any gloves. A startling omission in a young lady of fashion. No, well, she didn't put her coat on. Open car, too. Furthermore, there's something in that bag she wants to show me. What makes you say that? Bag doesn't match her dress, indicating it was picked for size rather than style to accommodate some bulky object. You amaze me, Holmes. What do you mention, my dear fellow? Well, that's interesting. What is? A cab, turning at the empty house. I wonder why he followed her here. Oh, wouldn't you? Bye, Parson, with glasses. Well, we shall soon know. Yes, Mrs. Hudson? It's a young lady, sir. Most urgent. Ask her to come in. Oh, go right in, miss. Mr. Holmes? Yes, this is my friend, Dr. Watson. How do you do? How do you do? Mr. Holmes, I... You must excuse me, please. I... Yes, well, won't you sit down? Uh, come along. May I? Oh. It's quite all right. Thank you. Mr. 
Now try to control yourself. Miss Fennick, you're with friends. You know my name? No magic, I assure you. I've often seen your picture. You're the daughter of Sir George Fennick, aren't you? Yes. It's about my father that I... What about your father, Miss Fennick? Oh, I don't know what to do. He's always been the nicest, dearest person. Only since Mother died. Yes, yes, but uh, we, we know. So I didn't think anything of it when he was away all night before last. But he didn't come home until yesterday at tea time. He didn't come in for dinner at all. Just paced up and down in the library hour after hour. I begged him to let me in, but he wouldn't. Steady, steady. Now take your time. I couldn't sleep a wink last night. Then I started hearing things. Hearing things? What sort of things? I heard someone in the garden underneath my window. Then I saw a figure moving down the garden path. And I recognized my father. Stealing through his own garden like a thief. He had a spade in his hand. And he stopped by the greenhouse where he started to dig. This morning, at daybreak, I, I stole out into the garden and found this. A finger. A human finger. Bring up Scotland Yard, Billy Watson. Ask them to get hold of Inspector Gregson and tell him to meet us at once at George Phoenix's house, Kingston. Operator, get me Scotland Yard quick. He's still in the library, miss. Thank you. We'll see him right away. Will you come with me, please? Thank you. I got your message, Mr. Holmes. Yes, indeed. Dad, may I come in? Dad. That's funny. He doesn't answer. Do you mind? Please do. Thank you. Watson, quick. Oh. Come along, no, my dear. No, no, no. Take charge, Miss Fennick, please. Sorry, sir. Uh, no, miss, please. Uh, please. Please come along with me. Dead? Yes. What do you make of it, Doctor? Shot in the back, between the second and third ribs. The bullet undoubtedly penetrated the heart. Look at the powder marks on his coat. I was afraid of this. What do you mean? Don't you remember the man in the cab who followed Miss Fennick to Baker Street? Well, you don't think he had anything to do with it, do you? I think it's reasonable to assume that he tipped off someone that I'd been sent for. Sir George has obviously been murdered to keep him from telling me what he knew. What was the weapon used? Small caliber revolver, point blank range by the look of the wound. <laughs> the murderer came in through those French windows. With the mud from the garden he brought in on his boots. Sir George must have surprised the intruder. Passed the room to him here. What follows, we can't tell. But from the location of the wound, I'd say that he turned his back for a moment, and as he turned, the muzzle of the revolver was placed between his ribs and one muffled shot fired. And you mean to say he kept on going, even after he was shot? There's no doubt about it. Look there. The trail of blood leads us back to the desk. There's something Sir George was after. Something. I know. He was trying to summon help, Poacher. I don't think so, Watson. There's the bell pull by the fireplace. No, you'll notice from the trail of blood that Sir George made straight for this desk here. I wonder. There was something he was desperately anxious to get. Hello. His right hand's clenched. That's perfectly natural. Death agony. But the left hand lies open. Why only one hand clenched in the death agony? The, the right hand, the hand nearest the desk. Please note that. If Sir George took something off this desk, something so important that he spilled his last drop of blood to get it, I want to know what it is. It's nothing but an ordinary match folder. Where does that lead us? I imagine to something very important, Gregson. This match folder's from Pembroke House. Why shouldn't it be? He was there, you know. We saw him yesterday. Yes, but the effort he made after he was shot to get hold of this match folder. It's just possible 
He wanted someone to remember Pembroke House. He may have wished to recall it to someone who saw him there, someone who, like ourselves, saw him with a woman. 